I'll talk to you about that later. Yeah, we got a plan. See if you can help me. I told him. Let's tee it up and let's go. Good morning. Oh, yeah, we've got a lot of conversations, good business going on. I think this is day 25, if I'm not mistaken. Members will please take your seats. Members will please take your seats. Watch your ear. Members will please take your seats. The hour for convening having arrived, all members will please take seats. Mr. Clerk, will you please ring the bell? We're going to have the morning roll call. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber. All members and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Have all members voted? The clerk will lock the machines. Doorkeepers, please close the door and keep them closed. We will begin our day as is our custom with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the lady from the 53rd House District, Representative Chair Lady Deborah Silcox. Chair Lady Silcox. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. I'm delighted this morning to introduce to you my minister, um, Dr. Richard Conwisher. The Reverend Dr. Richard Conwisher has served as the senior pastor of Peachtree Presbyterian Church since January of 2017. Before he arrived at Peachtree, Richard was lead pastor at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Newport Beach, California. He graduated cum laude with a Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration from Trinity University in San Antonio, where he has served as a member of the Board of Trustees since 2006. He earned a Master of Divinity from Princeton Theological Seminary and a Doctorate of Ministry from Fuller Theological Seminary. Richard has served as a trustee for both graduate institutions. In addition, he currently serves on the Board of Directors at the historic Fox Theater here in Atlanta. Rich is a, na a native Texan and is married to his wife, Kelly. Kelly also has her Master of Divinity degree from Princeton, which is where the couple met. Rich and Kelly are the proud parents of their two teenage daughters, Danica and Ashby, one of whom is a bulldog now. Rich's other active and pursuits include running, swimming, and playing golf. So please welcome my minister, Dr. Richard Conwisher. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Mr. Speaker, it's an honor to be with all of you today. Um, my name is Richard Conwisher. I admit that that's kind of a very strange name. Richard is a term that means powerful ruler. And Conwisher, I kid you not, is a fancy German term for a dishwasher. So <laughs> Reverend Whirlpool, Reverend Dishwasher, any of that, that is... That is, that is how that I roll, and um, it's an honor to be with you today. I do often get, especially after introduced, asked, 
Why in heaven's name did you move to Georgia from Newport Beach, California? Um, it's because I didn't want to tell my God I chose the weather over the good work that needed to be done here. And uh, so, anyhow, well, we did live almost a decade in California, and while we were there, our children were in the sweet spot. We were 20 minutes away from Disneyland. And so they apparently keep count on this. I went to Disneyland 250 times over the course of a decade with our kids. And we learned a lot of trivia about Disneyland, and I want to share one of those before I pray with us this morning. And that is this. When they were building the Jungle Cruise ride, it was a part of an orchard of trees, and the designers went through and marked each of the trees that they wanted to keep with a green ribbon around the trunk, and the ones that they wanted removed with a red ribbon around the trunk. And then they told the person who was in charge of removing the trees to spend the time and the energy and the equipment to remove all of the trees that had been marked. After a couple of days, they noticed that it was being haphazardly done, that it wasn't following along the lines of the red and the green. And then they approached this construction worker and they asked him why he wasn't following the instructions. And he admitted at that moment that he was red, green, colorblind. All of that is to say, to focus our prayer time today, is this. We can have the greatest intentions in the world. We can have the greatest designs in the world. We can have the greatest strategies and plans in the world, but if we don't have our eyes open and we cannot see properly, we will not accomplish what we are supposed to do. And that one of the most common prayers of the Bible that needs to anchor us is the prayer to open our eyes. And so let us pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, open our eyes to how fortunate we are this day. How blessed and honored to live in this state where freedom is still as abundant as the lush fields that supply our very food. Where our rich heritage was given to each and every one of us by those who more than self their country loved and mercy more than life. Open our eyes this morning, O oh God, with a gratitude that overcomes entitlement, a love that overtakes our apathy, and a hope that overwhelms our despair. Give us a common faith that overshadows even our persistent skepticism. Invite us right now into a larger story. Give us a grander vision for our life together. Open our eyes, O oh God, that we may be as diligent today in our own work as the Ukrainian soldier standing at this moment to defend his city. Open our eyes that we may be as compassionate today as the nurse that is sitting with a child in Choa as she struggles with cancer. Open our eyes, may we only fear that our spirits will be too frail to meet the demands of tomorrow. Open our eyes that our own hearts may grow faint before the responsibilities of our own citizenship. May we only fear that our ideals may falter and seek shelter in the security of the past or the comfort of keeping things just as they are. And so make us both patient and vigilant. Open our eyes as you shower wisdom on these leaders to cripple the forces of hatred in our society, to improve the quality of education for our young, to enhance the safety of our streets, to empower business leaders and workers, to deepen our resolve for what is true and noble and just, and teach us to cherish the precious grace that is life and life with friends. And may what happens in this very chamber Model that friendship. Strip away, remove our pride, remind us of the higher ground of our holy calling and the sacred trust that people have put in us as leaders. Open our eyes to the fact that we can't do this on our own, that we don't pause in this moment out of some sort of obligation or tradition or ceremony, but out of desperation. This is our cry for help, O oh God. We know that we will not automatically rise to our dreams, but that we will fall to the level of our commitment to you and to one another, and so embolden us. May we serve those in need and be a sign not of our own agendas, but of your greater kingdom coming on earth as it is in the skies. Match the quality of our speeches with the quality of our listening, and teach us what it means to contribute to this state, not simply to take from it, or even worse, just to sit around and complain about it. Open our eyes 
to carry with us into the future the courage that can only come from above, to stand against evil and suffering, armed only with the power of our own generosity. Call us to that rare burden of leadership, still looking, still searching for a more peaceful, kind, and faithful people, not only happy but humble, and not only prosperous but good. And finally, O oh God, while we may come from different traditions and while we may hold a variety of convictions, while our hearts or even our words diverge, as I speak this prayer, I offer it in the only way that I know how. Through my Lord, Jesus, I pray. And may all of the people say in reply, amen, and may it be so. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to get a copy of that prayer. I'll get it to you. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors, and members may join the uh, chaplain of the day in the South Annie Room to have a photo if you'd like. Pastor, we appreciate. We appreciate that message and, and especially that powerful prayer. Thank you. Chairman Tarvin, the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, is recognized. Chairman Tarvin. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Information and Audits has read the journal from the previous legislative day and found it to be correct. And uh, something else for us to think about today, I, I again this morning was reminded, we must take personal responsibility. We cannot change the circumstances, the seasons, or the winds but we can change ourselves. That's one thing we have complete charge of. You're so right, Mr. Chairman. As always, you're always right. Thank you for that. Chairman Tarvin, the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to dispense with the reading of the journal. The chair hears none. The reading of the journal is dispensed with. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? Chair hears none and the journal is confirmed. Mr. Clerk, will you read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? Representative Administration of the 104th moves finally be establishes the order of business in our first part of the period unanimous consents. Introduction of bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of House bills and resolutions. Second reading of bills and resolutions. Reports of standing committees. First reading and reference of Senate bills and resolutions. Morning orders. Is there any objection to adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. House Bill 586 by Representative Smith of the 18th bill be entitled Act to authorize the assessment and collection of a technology fee. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 587 by Representative Anderson of the 10th the bill be entitled Act to amend an act providing for the election of the members of the Board of Education of Rabin County. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 588 by Representative Smith of the 18th bill be entitled Act to amend Article 2, Chapter 3, Title 35 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotator relating to the Georgia Crime Information Center. Public Safety and Homeland Security. House Bill 589 by Representative Chokas of the 151st bill be entitled an Act to amend Chapter 6 of Title 50 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotator relating to the Department of Audits and Accounts. 
Budget and Fiscal Affairs Oversight. House Bill 590 by Representative Cameron of the First Crow of the 118th, Kelly the 16th, and Bonner the 73rd. Bill be titled an act to amend Title 16 of the Fiscal Code of George Ann Taylor relating to crimes and offenses. Judiciary Non Civil. House Bill 591 by Representative Evans the 89th, Trenner the 85th, Trenner the 80th, Mitchell the 88th, Bennett the 94th, and others. Bill be titled Act to amend an act to provide that each resident of Cab County who is 65 years of age or older or disabled and whose net income with the net income of the spouse. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 592 by Representative Reeves the 99th, Mitchell the 88th, Silcox the 53rd, Crawford of the 84th, Drenner of the 85th. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 6 of Title 15 of the Fiscal Code of George Ann Taylor relating to general provisions regarding superior courts. Judiciary. House Bill 593 by Representative Evans, the 89th, Trenner, the 85th, Tran of the 80th, Mitchell, the 88th, Bennett, the 94th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend a former local a former local constitutional amendment. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 594 by Representative Evans, the 89th, Trenner, the 85th, Tran of the 80th, Mitchell, the 88th, Bennett, the 94th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend the act to provide that each resident of the Cab County School District who is 65 years of age or over. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 595 by Representative DeLoach of the 167th. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the official code of Georgia Annotator relating to primaries and elections generally. Governmental affairs. House Bill 596 by Representative Green of the 154th. Bill be titled an act to authorize the assessment and collection of a technology fee by the probate court of Randolph County. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 597 by Representative Bentley, the 150th bill be titled an act to provide a new charter for the city of Andersonville. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 598 by Representative Cox of the 28th, Paul of the 33rd, Washburn of the 144th, Douglas of the 78th, Jaspers of the 11th. Bill be titled an act to amend Title 43, the official code of Georgia annotator relating to professions and businesses. Regulated Industries. House Bill 599 by Representative Irwin of the 32nd. Bill be titled an act to amend and act to provide new charter for the town of Martin. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 600 by Representative Schofield of the 63rd, Workheiser of the 157th, Beverly of the 143rd, Saints of the 180th, Scott of the 76th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 13 and Title 50 of the official code of Georgia annotator relating to general provisions of administrative procedure. Judiciary. House Bill 601 by Representative Silcox of the 53rd, Holland of the 54th, Roberts of the 52nd, and Panich of the 51st. Bill be titled an act to amend the act provide a new charter for the city of Sandy Springs. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 602 by Representative Ridley of the 6th. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 4B of Title 43 of the official code of Georgia annotator relating to Georgia Athletic and Entertainment Commission. Regulated Industries. House Bill 603 by Representative Weedauer of the 121st and Gaines of the 120th. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 11 of Title 15 of the official code of Georgia annotator relating to the Juvenile Code. Juvenile Justice. House Bill 604 by Representative Byrd of the 20th and Horner of the 3rd. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 1 of the official code of Georgia annotator relating to persons and their rights. Public and Community Health. House Bill 605 by Resident Dickey, the 145th, Bentley, the 150th, Martin of the 49th, and Knight of the 134th. Bill be titled an act to amend Part 4 of Article 7 of Chapter 3 of Title 20, the official code of Georgia Annotator relating to realizing education achievement can happen. Education. House Bill 606 by Resident Cooper, the 45th, Hatchet of the 155th. Houston in the 170th, Cameron in the 1st, and Newton in the 127th. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 6 of Title 31 of the official code of Georgia annotated related to state health planning and development. Health. House Bill 607 by Representative Perkle of the 169th, Jones in the 47th, Martin in the 49th, Dubnik of the 29th. Bill be titled an act to amend Part 7, Article 7 of Chapter 3 of Title 20 of the official code of Georgia annotated related to Hope Scholarships. Education. House Bill 608 by Representative Evans, the 57th, Smith, the 138th, Maynard, the 56th. Bill be titled an act to amend Code Section 32.2.3 of the official code of George Antenna relating to development of transportation plans. 
Transportation. House Bill 609 by Representative Bentley, the 150th bill be titled an act to amend and an act providing for the Board of Commissioners of Taylor County. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 610 by Representative Bentley, the 150th bill be titled an act to amend and an act changing the number of members of the Board of Education of Taylor County. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 612 by Representative Marin of the 96th bill be titled an act to amend Article 4, Chapter 3, Title 50, the official code of Georgia and Taylor relating the official state language. Governmental Affairs. House Bill 613 by Representative Marin of the 96th and Park of the 107th. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 2, Chapter 7 of Title 48 of the official code of Georgia and Taylor relating the imposition rate computation of income tax. Ways and Means. House Bill 614 by Resident Marin of the 96. The bill be titled an act to amend Article 3, Chapter 2 of Title 40 of the official code of Georgia and Taylor relating to prestige license plates. Motor Vehicles. House Bill 615 by Resident Smith of the 70th, Bonner of the 73rd, Jenkins of the 136th, and Thomas of the 65th. Bill be titled an act to amend the act con continuing the state court of Coweta County. Judiciary. House Bill 616 by Representative Evans, the 89th bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 1 of Title 50, the official code of Georgia and Taylor relating the general provisions relative to state government. Governmental Affairs. House Bill 617 by Representative Jaspers, the 11th, Perkle, the 169th, Weed Hour, the 121st. Thomas of the 21st and Hagen of the 156th. The bill be titled an act to amend Title 32 of the official code of Georgia and Taylor relating to highways, bridges, and ferries. Transportation. House Resolution 322 by Resident Maynard, the 56th, Thomas the 65th, Mitchell the 88th, Jackson the 128th, and Lima the 98th. A resolution creating the House Study Committee on Research and Development and Reparation Proposals. Special Rules. House Resolution 323 by Representative Evans, the 89th, Renner, the 85th, Oliver, the 82nd, Schofield, the 63rd, and Buckner, the 137th. A resolution urging the Public Service Commission. Natural Resources and Environment. House Resolution 324 by Representative Houston of the 170th and Green in the 154th. A resolution creating the House Study Committee on the Jobs Tax Credit. Ways and Means. House Resolution 347 by Representative Brees of the 99th, Clark of the 100th, Bond of the 73rd, Martinez is the 111th, Hitchens is the 161st, and others. A resolution des designated the song The Veteran Anthem. Defense and Veteran Affairs. Senate Bill 99 by Senator Donazell of the 27th, Watson the 1st, Brass the 28th, Couser to the 46th. Bill be titled an act to amend Code Section 31647 of the Official Code of Georgia and Taylor relating to exemptions from Certificate of Need requirements. Help. Senate Bill 116 by Senator Watson the 1st, Mallow the 2nd, Hickman of the 4th, Gooch the 51st, and Ginn of the 47th. Bill be titled an act to amend code section 36376 of the official code of Georgia and Taylor relating to disposition of municipal property. Governmental Affairs. Senate Bill 129 by Senator Williams the 25th, Burns the 23rd, Harvard on the 16th, Anderson of the 24th, Beach the 21st, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend chapter 2 and title 21 of the official code of Georgia and Taylor relating to primaries and elections generally. Governmental Affairs. Senate Bill 145 by Senators Still of the 48th, Donazell of the 27th, Robertson of the 29th, Anna Duarte of the 31st, Payne of the 54th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 60 of Title 36 of the official code of Georgia and Taylor relating to general provisions applicable to counties and municipal corporations. Governmental Affairs. Senate Bill 159 by Senator Robertson of the 29th, Albers of the 56th, Dugan of the 30th, Kirkpatrick of the 32nd, Walker of the 20th. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 5 of Title 42 of the Official Code of Georgia and Taylor relating to general provisions regarding correctional institutions, states, and counties. Public Safety and Homeland Security. That completes first readers. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll come to order. We have a special guest this morning, former representative Mike Cohen, a dear friend. Mike's in the back. Let's welcome Mike. Thank 
Amen. Good to see you, Mike. Always good to be with you. Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 565, I represent Smith of the 18th, Cooper of the 45th, Hilton of the 48th, Camp of the 135th, Owl of the 50th, and others. A bill relating to temporary assistance for needy families. House Bill 566, by Representative Lewis Ward of the 115th, Beverly of the 143rd, Bentley of the 150th, Jackson of the 128th, Schofield of the 63rd, a bill relating to the Department of Agriculture. House Bill 567, by Representative Chokas of the 151st, Collins of the 71st, Hitchens of the 161st, Yerta of the 152nd, Washburn of the 144th, a bill relating to general provisions relative to criminal trespass, damage to property, general provisions relative to provisions applicable to counties and municipal corporations. House Bill 568 by Representative Camp of the 135th, Ballinger of the 23rd, Bathiac of the 74th, Jaspers of the 11th, Corbett of the 174th, a bill relating to general provisions regarding liability of owners and of occupiers of land. House Bill 569 by Representative Stevens of the 164th, Petrie of the 166th, a bill to amend an act establishing the court count, the estate court of Bryan County. House Bill 570 by Representative Cameron of the 1st Camp of the 135th, Campbell of the 171st, Hagen of the 156th, Huddleston of the 72nd, a bill relating to general provisions relative to the Department of Human Services. House Bill 571 by Representative Silcox of the 53rd, Cooper of the 45th, Dempsey of the 13th, a bill related to Alzheimer's and related dementia state plan. House Bill 572 by Representative Reeves of the 99th, Deloach of the 167th, Gunter of the 8th, Smith of the 18th, Leverett of the 123rd, and others, a bill relating to the Georgia Relating to the Government, Transparency, and Campaign Finance, House Bill 573 by Representative Gallagher of the 19th, a bill relating to Animal Protection, House Bill 574 by Representative Gallagher of the 19th, a bill relating to sprink fire sprinklers and single-family dwelling units, House Bill 575 by Representative Gallagher of the 19th, Hilton of the 48th, Widower of the 121st, Williams of the 168th, a bill relating to general provisions relative to professions and businesses, House Bill 576 by Representative Gallagher of the 19th, and Scoggins of the 14th, a bill relating to general provisions regarding health, House Bill 577 by Representative Davis of the 87th, Scott of the 76th, Schofield of the 63rd, Mitchell of the 88th, Drenner of the 85th, and others, a bill relating to general provisions regarding public officers and employees. House Bill 578 by Representative Wilkerson of the 38th, Hilton of the 48th, Jones of the 25th, Carter of the 93rd, Smith of the 41st, a bill relating to student health and elementary and secondary education. House Bill 579 by Representative Barrett of the 24th, Jones of the 25th, Hilton of the 48th, Dempsey of the 13th, Jones of the 47th, and others, a bill relating to the Georgia Special Needs Scholarship Act, House Bill 580 by Representative Collins of the 71st, Smith of the 70th, Smith of the 18th, and Huddleston of the 72nd, a bill to amend an act to provide compensation and expenses for the chairperson and members of the Board of Education of Carroll County. House Bill 581 by Representative Blackman of the 146th and Crow of the 118th, a bill relating to economic analysis of certain tax benefits of law or proposed law, analysis on performance and outcomes of Code Section 33-1-25. House Bill 582 by Representative Cooper of the 45th, Silcox of the 53rd, Buckner of the 137th, Taylor of the 173rd, Seaball of the 34th, a bill relating to regulation of hospitals related institutions. House Bill 583 by Representative Hagen of the 156th, Gaines of the 120th, Camp of the 135th, a bill related to standards, labeling, and adulteration of food. House Bill 584 by Representative Roberts of the 52nd, Mitchell of the 88th, Owl of the 50th, Panish of the 51st, and Evans of the 89th, a bill relating to dangerous instrumentalities and practices. House Bill 585 by Representative Jones of the 25th, Cox of the 28th, Barrett of the 24th, Jaspers of the 11th, and Clark of the 100th, a bill relating to development impact fees. House Bill 611 by Representative Burchette of the 176th, a bill relating to management of budgetary and financial affairs. House Resolution 301 by Representative Evans of the 89th, Cummings of the 39th, Westbrook of the 163rd, McLean of the 109th, Drenner of the 85th, and others. Resolution urging members of the United States Congress to enact federal legislation granting statehood to the people of Washington, D.C. House Resolution 302 by Representative Camp of the 135th, Burchette of the 176th, Hagen of the 156th, Lim of the 98th, Cameron of the 1st. Resolution proposing an amendment to the Constitution so as to provide for the appropriation of funds received from certain legal judgments or settlements. House, Bill, House Resolution 303 by Representative Jones of the 25th, Cox of the 28th, Barrett of the 24th, Jasper of the 11th, Clark of the 100th. Resolution proposing amendment to the Constitution so as to provide that the General Assembly may by general law authorize local boards of education to impose levy and collect development impact fees and use the proceeds to pay for a share of the cost of additional educational facilities. House Resolution 321 by Representative Petrie of the 166th, Gunter of the 8th, Scoggins of the 14th, Reeves of the 99th, Mathis of the 149th, and others. A resolution proposing amendment to the Constitution of the State of Georgia so as to provide that the right against self-incrimination be limited to criminal cases. Senate Bill 50 by Senator Burns of the 23rd, Dixon of the 45th, still of the 
48th, Eccles of the 49th, Payne of the 54th, and others, bill relating to elementary and secondary education, Senate Bill 63 by Senator Robertson of the 29th, Gooch of the 51st, Brass of the 28th, and Edvarte of the 31st, Kennedy of the 18th, and others, a bill relating to bonds and recognizances, Senate Bill 110 by Senator Walker the 3rd of the 20th, Gooch of the 51st, Tillery of the 19th, and Edvarte of the 31st, Robertson of the 29th, and others, a bill relating to general provisions for insurance, Senate Bill 121 by Senator Anderson of the 24th, Gannon of the 47th, Gooch of the 51st, Kennedy of the 18th, Robertson of the 29th, and others. A bill relating to general provisions applicable to counties and municipal corporations through second readers. Reports of Standing Committees. Mr. Clerk will read. Representative Robert Dick of the 148th, 145th District Chairman on Committee on Agriculture and Consumer Affairs submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Agriculture and Consumer Affairs has had under its consideration the following bills of the House. It's instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 305 do pass by substitute. House Bill 545 do pass. House Bill 452 do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative Robert Dickey, the 145th District Chairman. Representative Carpenter, the 4th District Chairman on Committee on Creative Arts and Entertainment, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Creative Arts and Entertainment is that under consideration following bills of the House. Instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 549 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Carpenter, the 4th District Chairman. Representative Tyler Paul Smith, the 18th District Chairman of the Committee on Judiciary Non-Civil, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Judiciary Non-Civil is added under its consideration. The following bills of the House. Instructed me to report the same back to the House. following recommendations. House Bill 166 do pass. House Bill 196 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 227 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 302 do pass. House Bill 327 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Tyler Small Smith of the 18th District, Chairman. Representative John Corbett of the 174th District, Chairman of the Committee on Motor Vehicles, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Motor Vehicles is at an its consideration following bills of the House. It has instructed me to report the same back to the House with following recommendations. House Bill 524 do pass. House Bill 541 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative John Corbett of the 174th District, Chairman. Representative Shaw Blackman of the 146th District, Chairman of the Committee on Ways and Means, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Ways and Means is, has had under its consideration following the bills of the House. It's instructed me to report the same back to the House the following recommendation. House Bill 31 do pass. House Bill 3, 220, 230 do pass. House Bill 264 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 408 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Shaw Blackman of the 146th District, Chairman. That completes the reading of the reports of standing committees. Is he ready for the... We are ready to move on to morning orders. House will come to order. House will come to order. Chairman Hatchett 
is recognized for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that this House insist on its position on House Bill 18 and appoint a conference committee. Representative Hatchett moves that this House insist on its position in disagreeing to the Senate substitute to House Bill 18 and that a conference committee of conference be appointed. The clerk will read the caption. House Bill 18 by Representative Burns. Mr. Clerk, Number suspend 59. just for a minute. You may want to pay attention since this is one of the things you have to get done before we go home. Mr. Clerk, will you please read the caption? House Bill 18 by Representative Burns, the 159th Journals of the 47th Administration of the 104th and others to be titled an Act Amendment Act making and providing for appropriations for state fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022 and ending June 30th, 2023, known as the General Appropriations Act. Is there objection? Chair hears none. The House has insisted. The Chair appoints Chairman Hatchett, Leader Estration, Speaker Pro Tim Jones of the 47th as the Committee of, on, of Conference on House Bill 18. We'll move on now to morning orders. We have a whole slew of morning orders here, y'all. And we have a lot of things to get done today. So I'm going to hold you to one minute. So when that light goes off, you know the mic's getting ready to go off as well. So we'll start with Chair Lady, Chair Lady Cooper. Is she up front for a morning order? She is not. So let's go with Representative Gladney and the Augusta delegation for a morning order. Representative Gladney and friends from the Augusta delegation. So you, Chairman Pratt. <laughs> Representative Howard, good morning. Representative Frazier. Good morning, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So often we think of history makers as icons from a bygone era and we frequently miss the opportunity to recognize those who walk among us. I present for your hearing today the life works of an incredible living Augusta legend, Dr. Mallory Millinder. Dr. Millinder is a graduate, professor emeritus, and campus historian of Augusta, Georgia's very own HBCU, Payne College. As a student from the very beginning, he led his generation in community activism. Over time, his leadership throughout the community grew and his influence among students flourished. He earned many advanced degrees to include a master's in journalism and he founded the Augusta News Review, which was Augusta's first African-American newspaper, printing its inaugural release in 1971. Dr. Millinder's unwavering commitment to our community and to his students earned him many noteworthy accolades over his career. Colleagues, please join me in honoring Dr. Millinder and his family who has joined us in the gallery today. Thank you, sir, for your work and your contribution to our history. Thank you, good to have you, have you, and thank you for your contribution, sir. We appreciate you. Thanks for being here. Chair Lady Cooper is recognized for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to welcome members of the Primrose Garden Club. Uh, that's my garden club. People got and sort of laughed at me the first time I ran for office, my opponent, because I had listed my garden club. And boy, was he wrong. When you want a group of people to work for you on a campaign or in your community, just get the garden club leaders to do it. So I'm glad to have them here in the Capitol with us today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the will. Always good to have the garden clubs. Representative Maynard is recognized for a morning order.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm waiting for Representative Karen Bennett to join me. Please join us to welcome the following physical therapy students and others in the gallery for APTA Georgia at the Capitol Day. APTA is the American Physical Therapy Association. If you are part of the APTA celebrations, please stand so we can honor you. The students are Maggie Strickert, Matthew Wild, Lauren Keene, and Lucy Brumbaugh. There were nearly 500 attendees at the Georgia Freight Depot this morning celebrating the profession and the importance of staying engaged in policy in the legislative session. Therapists are critical to our health care system, improving overall health and helping prevent avoidable health care services. If you haven't seek the services of a PT yet, it's very likely you will at one point. Let's give them a hand, please. Thank you. Good to have you in the People's House. Representative Adenia is recognized to recognize a very special group in the gallery. Thank you, Representative. All right. <clears throat> Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All right, we just wait for a few of my colleagues. Joined by friends. I'd like to recognize uh, the black student leaders for the inaugural Emory Black History Month Day in Capitol, at the Capitol. Um, they are being represented by Emory Votes Initiatives and black student organizations. Could you please rise so we, we can recognize you? Thank you for coming to your capital. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield well. Good job. Thank you. Welcome, young people. Representative Al's, Al is recognized for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to recognize Asian American Advocacy Day at the Capitol. As members of Georgia's first ever AAPI caucus, we're well aware of the importance of community advocacy and being aware that historically there have been some voices that are not always heard in spaces like this. Asian American Advocacy Day is about empowering those communities, hearing those voices, and understanding that government works best when we all participate. If the members uh, of the Asian Americans Advancing Justice could please stand so you could be recognized. Thank you so much for coming, and welcome to your house. You belong here. Thank you, Representative, and welcome to the People's House. Now, Chairman Hitchens has a very special group that he's going to recognize, Chairman Bill Hitchens. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have a great uh, group of uh, young people here today that we'd like to recognize. They're from a special place from my and the speaker's hometown. And uh, they, uh, they're from Effingham County High School and they're with the Effingham County Morning Interact Club. Uh, I'm a Rotarian, speaker used to be Rotarian and we're a very proud of the group. They're accompanied by a couple of their teachers, uh, Mr. Harden, want to stand up? Uh, Janae Wells, who's my daughter, one of my daughter's best friends, and uh, Tara Aiken. I know her maiden name because she used to date my son, but <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know her maiden name, but we appreciate them coming to the, to the uh, people's house. You know, we've had a lot of outstanding people graduate from Effingham High School, including uh, Speaker, Speaker Don Burns, uh, who probably graduated way before any of these people were born. But uh, I yield the well, Mr. Speaker. The chairman didn't invite all you young people to stand. You're the most important. Well, all you young people from Effingham County Interact, please stand so we can welcome all of you. Good to have y'all. Thanks, Chairman Hitchens. You did a fine job there, as usual. Representative Scott is recognized for a morning order. And friends, Representative Scott. Good to see all your friends. Good morning, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to recognize the Southern Crescent Women in Business. Will you all please stand, and you all give them a round of applause. And thank you all for coming down to your state capitol. Thank you. I yield the well. Thank you, Representative Scott, and welcome. 
Chairman Mark Newton is recognized to introduce the doctor of the day, Chairman Newton. Good morning, colleagues. I know we talk a lot about healthcare workforce and those who are training our future physicians and PAs and nurse practitioners. We're, we're fortunate here today to have a doctor of the day who actually does that day in and day out. He's taking a rare day off, Dr. David Falal. We're glad to have him. He's the chief medical information officer at Augusta University and MCG, where we train so many of our physicians in the state. He's a board certified internal medicine doctor. It means he can take care of all of us. Uh, perfectly well. He's been part of the internal medicine residency program since 2013. He teaches uh, practice management and economics as well. Originally his B BS in biology and a BA in German from Wofford College and a doctor of medicine from the Medical College of Georgia where he was class president as well. Uh, in addition he uh, He's a, a crucial role in training our doctors of the future, and I'm just glad he's here with us today. Help me say thank you to him to, for being here, actually, after he has a couple of words. Thank you, members. Doctor, good to have you. All right, thank you. Have a few words for us. Well, I just wanted to thank everyone. This is such an honor and a privilege to be here today. Um, I know this is also the, uh, the start of, of Georgia snow that's outside. The yellow stuff's out and about, so I'm here and available. I also want to say thank you again also for the support of the Medical College of Georgia. I, that's where I did my training, and that's really where I found my passion to teach our, our future residents and our future physicians of the uh, state of Georgia. So thank you again. Let's see, now we have a South Georgia contingent here. Starting in the middle of the state, Chairman Dickey, Chairman Yurder, Representative, Representative Campbell, and Chairman Corbett, and Chairman Perkle. Man, oh, and Dean Green, Chairman Meeks. Thank you, Mr. Committee. This is the uh, Peanut Caucus here. Uh, on your desk is a flyer. Tomorrow is peanut butter and jelly day. So uh, get in line uh, tomorrow. Those of you who are new have not had a grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Uh, it is delicious. And this year, by popular request, it's made with peach jelly, believe it or not. <laughs> so, so, I, uh, so our peanut uh, industry is large and uh, uh, Joe Campbell here is going to, uh, Representative, is going to tell you a few words about our great peanut industry. Thank you, Chairman Nicky. Uh, I spent a career in the peanut industry, and uh, just a few facts to show our dominance on peanuts in the country and actually in the world. In, in, a, in, in the country, Georgia grows 52% of the peanuts for the country. Uh, an ex we usually are somewhere around 650,000 acres. The closest state to us would be Alabama at around 200, 220. And we have a high percentage of irrigating, which gives us good quality, uh, excellent soil. But the main thing we've got is good peanut growers. And we have good peanuts, so keep eating peanuts, okay? Thank you. Mr. Speaker, uh, Representative Maynard is, uh, is, is a really great grower of peanuts, and I really appreciate her being part of this caucus, and uh, uh, I, I, I appreciate her farming background. Let's see. All right. For you, he, um, he talked about PBJ Day tomorrow, but for you new members, it's a great day to be at the Capitol. There'll be a great aroma of those um, PBJs being prepared. So be prepared to drink some cold milk and eat some peanut butter and jelly. It's a good day. Thank you, members. Representative Roberts, recognized for a morning order. 
Good morning, colleagues. We want to welcome the Moms Demand Action Chapter of Georgia, who is in the Capitol today. Woo! <laughs> Moms Demand is the nation's largest grassroots volunteer network working to end gun violence. They campaign for new and stronger solutions to lax gun laws and loopholes that jeopardize the safety of our families, educate policymakers and parents about the importance of secure firearm storage, and work to create a culture of gun safety through partnerships with businesses, community organizations, organizations and influencers. They are driven by the knowledge that guns are the number one killer of our kids and teens, both in America and Georgia. We know that gun violence is preventable and they are committed to doing what it takes to keep families safe. And they, like my colleagues and I, cannot understand why our common sense gun safety bills are not getting a hearing. They'll be here today talking to you because they want to be heard by their good leaders, who I know you are all good leaders, and you know that listening is a key component to being a good leader. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the People's House. Chairman Tyler Paul Smith for a morning order. Thank you, you're, Mr. You're Chairman. You're welcome, and that outburst is not. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, Harrison County is the first line of defense against Alabama, but thankfully some of them were able to take time off of the front lines and come be with us for Harrison County Day at the Capitol. If y'all please stand and rise, welcome to the People's House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First line of defense, welcome Harrison County. Representative Bentley is recognized for a morning order. Representative Karen Bentley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, I really need you to listen carefully to this announcement. Uh, today is GFA Day at the Capitol Georgia Environmental Finance Authority Day, and they're having lunch um, in room five. 14 in the Coverdale, but um, also colleagues, please know that GFA will be receiving or has already received federal funding that will be beneficial to all of our constituents. There's federal money coming from money coming from the federal government through GFA, Georgia Environmental Finance Authority to our community action agencies across the state that will help our constituents weatherize their homes. So if you want to learn more about this funding, please go by room 514 today and meet with GFA to learn about the weatherization funding that will help all of our constituents across the state of Georgia. And Chair Lady Lynn Smith is supporting GFA as well. Thank, thank you, I agree. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, ladies, and those that heard that announcement can take advantage of it, and those that didn't, it's more for the ones that, go and that heard it. So that kind of worked out, didn't it, their representative? That concludes our morning orders. We're ready to move on to the rules calendar. Ready to move on to the rules calendar. Let's see, that ante room's full on the south ante room, but the member ante room is not. So these important conversations can either go out the front door or to the ante room. We're ready to start on our rules calendar. We have a number of important issues to take up today, so we need your attention. Mr. Clerk, will you read the caption to HB 332, 332? House Bill 332 by Representative Parrish for the 158th and others to be titled an act to amend Chapter 13 to Title 16 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to controlled substances so as to provide for certain provisions relating to Schedule 1 controlled substances, Schedule 4 controlled substances, and Schedule 5 controlled substances. This bill I'm going to refer to the Committee on Judiciary Non-Civil. That committee recommends this bill do pass. Chairman Parrish is recognized to present the bill. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the House, House Bill 332, many of you that have been here before will recognize this. This is just our annual drug update bill that we do each year. And it comes to us, it's requested by the Georgia Drugs and Narcotics Agency. And each year, they, the Drugs and Narcotics Agency, working with the GBI, bring us an updated drug bill so that our state laws confer with, or concur with the feds relating to controlled substances. This just allows our law enforcement agencies to be more effective and more, efficiency and more efficient in doing their job. It, to best of my knowledge, there's, there's no controversy over this bill. It's just simply a housekeeping bill that's done each year, and I would certainly ask for your support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't see any questions, but you, wasn't take, you were not taking any anyway, so that worked out as well, too. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? Chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas were 164, the nays are zero. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. For what purpose does a gentleman from the 139th District rise, Chairman Smith. Mr. Speaker, make a motion. State your motion. I move that House Bill 187 be recommitted to rules. Clerk will read the caption. House Bill 187 by Representative Lever to the 123rd and others to be entitled an act to amend Article 4, Chapter 9 of Title 16 in the official code of George Annotator relating to fraud and related practices. On the gentleman's motion that HB 187 be withdrawn from the calendar and recommitted to the Rules Committee, is there objection? Hearing none, it is so ordered. The clerk will read the caption to HB 84. House Bill 84 by Representative Rose, the 124th and others to be titled an act to amend Chapter 1 and Title 10 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to selling and other trade practices so as to provide for commercial financing disclosures. This bill I referred to the Committee on Banks and Banking. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chairman Rhodes is recognized to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I have House Bill 84 in front of us today. Um, what this bill does is revenue-based financing. This is a tool that is used by many medium, uh, small to medium-sized businesses. It's currently already out there, and what we're trying to do is create transparency and guardrails for this industry. What this legislation does is it brings the total amount of funds provided, the total amount of funds dispersed, the total of payments, total dollar cost uh, of financing and payments and prepayments. It puts all that um, that it has to be put in the disclosure and come to the forefront. Mr. Speaker, that's what the legislation does, and I'll be glad to take a question. You have no questions, but if the gentleman has done a good job of explaining, so uh, you have I'll no questions. Well. 
Gentlemen, as yield to the well, we do have a member who has signed up to speak. Chair recognizes Whip Park to speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate the presentation of uh, the chairman of Game, Fish, and Parks, uh, as well as the intent of this bill. Uh, but I rise to question two provisions in House Bill 84. I've asked members on both sides of the aisle for clar clarification, but I haven't been able to obtain a clear answer. And so if members of this House share my concern and confusion, I encourage you all to vote no, as it would seem this bill has not yet been perfected. Um, if I may, I would direct members to lines 86 to 89. The bill states, quote, a provider's characterization of an accounts receivable purchase transaction as a purchase shall be conclusive that the accounts receivable purchase transaction is not a loan or a transaction for the use, forbearance, or detention of money, end quote. As this bill pertains to money or a financial instrument that I'm assuming can otherwise be quantifiable, I don't understand why this proposed bill allows a person's mere characterization to be conclusive or determinative that a certain transaction is not a loan, even if there may be clear evidence or financial documentation to the contrary. Second, on lines 97 to 99, a disclosure must be provided for each commercial financing transaction that's consummated. However, quote, a disclosure is not required as a result of the modification, forbearance, or change to a consummated commercial financing transaction, end quote. So again, why does this bill require only one initial disclosure and then explicitly preclude further disclosure in the event of change or modification to that financing transaction? Well, albeit this is certainly not my area of expertise, the plain meaning of these two, two provisions strike me as odd. Accordingly, I will yield for any answers to these questions if members can enlighten me. And if there are no answers to the questions that I'm asking of this body, I urge members to vote no and I will yield the well. The gentleman has a question if he would like to take them or he can yield the well, his preference. I'm happy to take a question, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman has a question to your right from Representative Ridley. Representative Jason Ridley to your right. So the gentleman yield? Yes, sir. Okay, on uh, your question on 86 through 89, mm -hmm. the reason that this saying this is because this is not a collateral based loan like you usually get at a bank that we're all used to. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever you do accounts receivable, you're actually taking an interest in that business. So whenever you get a loan, just like when you get a car loan, you have a, you have a bill at the end of every month that you've got to pay 300, it's over five years, whatever. What this does is each product, as it rolls out, a percentage of that product goes toward the debt. And so that's, that's the reason that it's, it's a little bit different uh, than most, uh, where you don't have a collateral base uh, in there. So you've got an interest in the business until that loan is paid off. Uh, your other question um, about the disclosures. Um, the gentleman have a question in there? I think it was at a statement. Oh, well, it I not, isn't sorry. it true, yes, uh, all this stuff that I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> Uh, the other part of, uh, of, your, of your concern uh, is on the disclosure part. Yes. Whenever you do a regular loan, you have a truth in lending uh, that the federal government requires you to do that you had to fill out. You got APR uh, because you're doing a loan that way. So that's the reason disclosures are different. All, basically, this is, is a contract between you and, the, and those, uh, the person that you're having that loan with that, you, that you'll pay back a percentage of that business until that loan's paid off. So that, that's the difference in the disclosures also. I, I thank Representative Ridley for enlightening me on financial transactions. <laughs> I think he's had one of those before, don't you? <laughs> thank you, Mr. Now, Speaker. If one more question from your counterpart on the majority side. Happy to. Whip Burchett for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, does the gentleman yield? Happily. I appreciate you coming up here and, and, and you know as, a, as an attorney I can appreciate us going line by line on these bills and, and so I want to go back to where you took us in uh, 86 through 89 and you mentioned uh, you had an issue with con the, the word conclusive. In the same testimony you gave you said even if there is a contract to, the, was it to contradict it, mm -hmm. well as a learned attorney would that be conclusive? 
I think additional information uh, regarding whether or not a loan is characterized a certain way would be helpful as opposed to a mere characterization. So, so would it be conclusive to you in plain English, does the gentleman yield my apologies? Uh, happily. So would it be conclusive to you if there was a contract to say otherwise? I don't think it would. Not when we're talking about financial Very transactions. Good. So isn't it true, does the gentleman yield? Yes. Further. So if, it, if, it, if there is evidence to the contrary, then that would be conclusive then, right? Not necessarily. Okay. I, I, think, I think especially when we're talking about financial in instruments and uh, in this instance, uh, re uh, accounts receivable, um, certainly taking into consideration both characterization along with additional information would make sense in my mind, especially if this is to ensure transparency for a new sort of financial product that we're bringing into the state of Georgia. Well, could we agree that it would be inconclusive if there was a contract to the contrary? Perhaps. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bigger. Well, you don't have any more questions. I do think you shed some light on it, both of you, and uh, everyone had the question and good answers. So, um, gentleman does not have any more questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman has yielded the well. We do have. Well, we're, we're ready to move. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? Chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? Chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no and the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas were 101, the nays 68. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Mr. Clerk, will you read the caption to HB 306, 306. House Bill 306 by Representative Fleming of the 114th and others to be entitled an act to amend code section 22506 of the official code of Georgia and Teddy relating to definitions of authority to enter into multi-year leases, purchases, or lease purchase contracts. So as to revise the definition of energy cost saving measures. This bill I've referred to the Committee on Governmental Affairs. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Well, Representative Fleming, you've had many years of service in this building, but is this, is this the first time you've been to the well in the House? Yes, it is. Well, welcome. Look forward to hearing your presentation. Representative Fleming is recognized to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and colleagues. I bring before you all this morning um, House Bill 306, which pertains to uh, performance contracts. Uh, performance contracting is a budget-neutral approach to make building and or facility improvements that reduce energy and water use to increase operational efficiencies. By partnering with an energy service company, local governments and state government uh, can use these services to pay for today's facility upgrades with tomorrow's um, energy savings without having to tap into their capital budgets at the current time. Uh, so 306 does three, three things. Um, it aligns Title 20 with Title 50. Uh, perform performance contracting has been utilized uh, in the state of Georgia for many years. Uh, it's used by federal government, state governments, uh, and many local governments. Two, it provides that performance contracts uh, can be based off revenue generation measures. And then three, it defines um, what the definition of what a facility is in code. Uh, this legislation adds revenue generation to the list of energy conservation measures that can be basis of energy performance contracts. 
Uh, state and county governments are unable to enter these energy performance contracts under Title 50, and then obviously school systems would be able to uh, under this bill in Title 20. Uh, these are funding solutions for public agencies. Um, just a few examples that, that they could be, could be used for. Uh, one, replacing water meters that will generate revenue from more accurate readings. Um, two, as simple as installing new LED uh, scoreboards in sporting facilities, uh, and then they're able to sell advertisement space on the, those boards. Uh, and th that's just a few examples, and there's many, many other ways it can be used. And then it also defines the word facility, aligning uh, a facility, and Georgia code is not defined. It aligns with what the federal code defines as a facility. And also, uh, this bill, um, all these contracts do have to go through the standard normal procurement process that is outlined by the state DOAS. So with that, Mr. Speaker, um, I would appreciate everybody's favorable consideration with the yes vote, and I would yield for some questions. Wow, I thought the gentleman did a pretty good job, but he has some questions. You take a question? Yes, sir, Mr. Speaker. All right, Representative. See if we can clarify some things here. Chairman Knight, to your right, has a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. And again, I, I, I want to make sure I'm clear on this because in a question that was in rules, but you know, we. We talked about the example of the revenue, you know, to, in the bill is to generate revenue. One of your examples was the scoreboard and the LED lights. But wouldn't you already be under the ability from a conservation perspective to do LED lights because it's a cost saving measure? You, you would, and what this does, this aligns Title 20 with Title 50 to be able to be allowed to do that. It's just clearing that up that you can do that and that you can use the revenue generated from these projects to help fund that project and other projects in that facility or building. Thank you. Representative Collins has a question. That right Does the gentleman yield? Yes, sir. I know in a previous version of this bill in committee, uh, there was a clause in there that this bill could be effectuated without having a bidding process, and, and that's been removed from this piece of legislation. Yes, sir. This, this committee sub uh, okay. that we, we worked with through in the subcommittee and went through full committee uh, did remove language pertaining to that. So now, um, like I said, it has to follow the normal procurement procedures and processes uh, as far as going out for bid. That's correct. Uh, another follow-up, if I may? Yes, sir. Is there any kind of uh, promise you could make to us if we pass this legislation? You won't work to put that back in across the hall over there? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. With that, Mr. Speaker, if there's no further questions, I'll yield the well. Well, you did have one more. Okay, I'll take one more, Mr. Speaker. Representative Clark, to your left, Representative Jasmine Clark, has a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, ma'am. So the two examples that you did provide, to me, those sound like cost savings, which was already um, allowed for mm -hmm. in the code. Can you provide an example of where one of these institutions would be generating revenue? Because they were already able to change to LED lights or to change their meter. So one more example uh, that I can give is, is an example of EV charging stations uh, that a facility could put out and they charge for that usage um, and once they charge and it covers the cost of that project it will continue to generate uh, revenue that could be used for other upgrades in that facility purchasing more stations stuff like that. Thank you. Yes ma'am. Representative I think this last question will bring complete clearly clarity and brightness to this whole question here. So yes, the gentleman sir. from the 21st, Representative Thomas, to your right, has a question. Thank you, do you yield? Yes, sir. I'd just like to know, um, as everybody knows, this is Engineering Day at the Capitol. Could you please explain to me how this affects the engineering industry across the state of Georgia? I don't think it would affect the engineering uh, <laughs> industry across the state of Georgia. All positive. <laughs> All right, thank you. You have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With that, I'll yield the well and ask for a favorable yes vote. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? 
Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bill? Chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas were 170, the nays are 1. The bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Congratulations. Good job. <laughs> Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 396. House Bill 396. House Bill 396 by Representative. Advance the 133rd to be entitled an act to amend code section 123402 of the official code of Georgia Ann Taylor relating to creation, membership, compensation, qualification, accountabilities, and assignment. So as to add the president of the Georgia College and State University, the Oconee River Greenway Authority. This bill I refer to the Committee on Natural Resources and Environment. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Representative, you've been around this capital for just hold just a moment. You've been around this capital for a few years, too, as well. But is this your first time in the well? Rep Representative Ken Vance from Milledgeville is recognized to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Fellow representatives, this is a pretty innocuous bill. All it does is add the president of Georgia College and State University to the Oconee River Greenway Authority. Uh, this legislation was done in 2002, and that position was inadvertently left off, and it took 20-odd years to get it back here. So I put that before you today, and I'll be glad to answer any questions if there are any. Oh, yes, sir. You have a question. The gentleman yield. Yes, sir. I yield. Chairman Wiedauer, to your right, has a question. Do you yield? Yes, sir. This is about the... Uh Oconee River, right? Do you know what county I reside in? That you reside in? Yes, sir. No, sir. Oconee County. Do you further yield? Yes, sir. Did you ask me to sign this bill? No, sir. But the river's not in your county either. Asked and answered. Uh, yes, sir. I think, uh, well, you do have another question. I don't know if this has to do with the, which county the river runs through, but it may have one of those questions. The gentleman from the 144th, Representative Washburn, has a question. He's to your left. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, will the gentleman yield? Yes, sir, I will. Is it not true that you and I share the county of Jones in terms of representation here in the Georgia House of Representatives? Yes, sir, it is. Will the gentleman yield for another question? Yes, sir. Uh, does this river have anything to do with Jones County? No, sir, unless you've got a boat and want to bring it over to Baldwin County and put it in down there at the Oconee Greenway so you can go down the river. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Speaker, there are no further questions. I yield the word. There is one more question to an old friend of yours. Former friend, maybe after this question, I'm not sure. But Chairman Hitchens, to your left, has a question. Isn't it, isn't it, do you yield? 
Yes, sir, I yield. Isn't it true that we've known each other for many, many years? That we've done what together? Known each other for many years. Oh. Make, make it easy on yourself now. <laughs> yes, yes, sir, it is. And in your previous job, you brought a, a real vitality to, to your work effort. I've tried. And isn't it true that you've ridden your bicycle all over the state of Georgia and shown the same vitality in doing that? Yes, sir. And one time, didn't you uh, tell me you were going to ride it all the way from your house in Milledgeville to Savannah and uh, that you were going to be, be very enthusiastic about it and, uh, and certainly wouldn't need any help? Yes, sir. And about 20 or 30 miles from Savannah, didn't you call me one day when you were out of gas in your bicycle and asked me if I could get you a ride for the rest of the way into Savannah? Yes, sir. I wasn't out of gas. I was out of leagues. Yeah. And isn't it true that you're going to bring that same vitality to this organization? Uh, yes, sir. But I won't run out of leagues. <laughs> no further questions. Mm. Gentleman has no further questions. He's done an outstanding job of presenting your bill. I ask for your favorable support of House Bill 396. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. You stood the test. There's no doubt about that. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? Chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? <laughs> He's got legs. Uh, have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas were 171 the nays zero. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Congratulations. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 7373. House Bill 73 by Resident Gola to the 19th and others to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 3 of Title 46 of the official code of Georgia Annotated relating to electric service. So as to require the seller provide a written disclosure statement with any agreement for the sale of distributed energy generation systems. This bill will have referred to the Committee on Energy, Utilities, and Telecommunications. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. The gentleman from the 19th, Representative Joseph Gullett, will present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I bring to you House Bill 73. This addresses bad actors in the residential solar space. I believe that every member in this chamber has constituents who have been ripped off by some of these out-of-state and fly-by-night companies. I believe that residential solar will continue to grow here in the state, and I believe this bill is an important step in that process. A little bit about the bill. It's got three components. First, it gives the PSC, Public Service Commission, the ability to, have, to issue COAs, which are Certificates of Authority. 
The PSC already regulates energy and power in our state, and they are already receiving the complaints from bad actors. So I believe this is the right group to regulate this emerging market. Second, it requires a written disclosure to be given to the buyer or lessee. This will include things like calculations used to determine total cost of the system, calculations on the cost savings, and whether or not you're purchasing or leasing the system, as well as who gets maybe gets the tax credits uh, from that system. And third, it requires the PSC work with the solar industry to create a solar awareness presentation that's on the PSC website. This would inform anyone wanting to learn about solar in the state what the current laws are, the ongoing cost of maintenance associated with these systems, uh, and, and other items about uh, whether it makes sense for solar for you and your home. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that's all this bill does. Uh, again, I think it's really important to our constituents that this is, uh, and to the success of the industry. And I'm happy to answer if any questions, if there are any. The gentleman has a couple of questions, if he'll take them. Sure. Representative Clark has a question to your left, Representative Jasmine Clark. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? I do for my friend. So you uh, referenced that there are some bad actors in the solar industry um, that have been harming constituents. I haven't heard anything from my constituents, so can you give me some examples of what these bad actors are doing? Because I'm genuinely not aware. Sure, yeah. So uh, I have a, a list here of uh, Fox 5 investigations. I think there's like six or seven Fox 5 investigations. Um, one says solar power has been chaos. One says hidden cameras reveal the dark side of solar power. Uh, one is about ways to avoid scams. Uh, one's about the PSC getting lit up with complaints about solar ripoffs. Um, one's about the Public Service Commission calling attention to false roots off solar ads. Um, and so uh, one's about he paid $82,000 for rooftop solar, and that does not work. Um, so in my, in my, one of my constituents has a trailer. Um, it's about $52,000 on the tax digest. Uh, she was sold a $75,000 solar panel system. She does not speak English. Uh, the, the contract was in English. Uh, and they installed it on both the north and south sides of her trailer. So if you're familiar, I know you're a scientist, you know. North is not good for solar, right? If you face it to the north, you're in trouble. Um, and so her trailer is completely like this solar panel, like just, you know, all over the place. Um, and then uh, they are sold that's telling, hey, um, you won't be paying a power bill anymore. And at the end of the day, sometimes these solar companies actually do pay your power bill for you for a year or so. You have it installed, your, your power bill has come back with a, a zero dollar, you know, bill. You feel good about it. Then these companies are gone. Uh, your power bill actually comes in almost at full price as it always has been. Um, and uh, so that's like an example in my district. I have, I think I've had 13 complaints in my district from my EMC uh, in the last two years. So uh, EMCs, um, MEAGs, those are all fighting this problem because a lot of times they, they come and sell, the, the bad actors anyways, they come and sell like they're, they're from the, 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 uh, the EMC. Hey, I'm with, I work with Greystone, who's my EMC, and uh, we're doing solar around your area and you know, we'd love to you know, get you in on this. So, that's one example for, for me. I know it's happening across, uh, across the state. Thank you. Sure. Gentlemen, yield for another question. I do. Or two. Representative Bentley is recognized for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? I do. Um, Representative, can you explain to me exactly um, how would this bill affect the, um, not the funeral industry this time, but uh, Taylor County, where my home county, we have tons and miles and miles of uh, solar panels. Sure. And I know there's uh, interest for a new company coming into uh, my district, several new companies coming into my district. So how would this bill um, going forward would actually impact those new businesses that are trying to come into House District 150? Yeah, so and this thing, this, those businesses, and I don't think that these are ones that apply, this are installing solar on people's homes, residential solar. It does not affect them. It doesn't affect any commercial uh, installation of solar or the big solar solar farms that are coming to Georgia. Representative Okoye has to your left has a question. Okay. Representative's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? I do for my friend. Great. Is it not true that this bill uh, would help to streamline the solar industry? And um, uh, Representative Mandisa Thomas in her district had so many people ripped off 
by solar installers that she also helped to give birth to this bill. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Thank you for that question. You have one last question if you'll take it. I'll take it. Chairman Yerder, right up in front of you, right down the middle, has a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is Gentleman Yeo. Of course. Uh, is it not true that we've had discussions about me witnessing bad actors taking advantage of elderly people in my community? It, it is true. Thank you for bringing this bill. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a fact. If you, if you actually talk to your EMCs back home, I think it's going to apply to every single member in this body that there are some bad actors out there. Majority of the industry is great, uh, but there's some bad actors, and almost all of them don't actually, they're not Georgia companies, and this is going to help, uh, help Georgia companies thrive in Georgia. That's what we want. So uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well. The gentleman has yielded the well. We have another speaker that needs to be heard on this bill. Representative Roman is recognized to speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, good morning, colleagues. When I was asked if I'm speaking for or against this bill, I said it's complicated. Um, first, <laughs> I want to echo the need for consumer protections. This is, bills like this are incredibly important to protect people from being scammed. But in order pr to protect consumers, this bill requires the COA to be completed by the Public Service Commission, which is relatively unprecedented. The PSC currently does not provide certificates of author authority. It's why sellers should instead register, I think, through the Secretary of State like similar industries. In addition, there is no funding in this bill for the C PSC to stand up an office that such a task requires. Does this mean that in the future, we could receive a request for funding once it becomes apparent the resources required for such a certification process? We've seen the kind of resources it requires through the Secretary of State's office. Our state government is experiencing intense challenges and high turnover. Creating redundant offices will further strain that system. I know I sound like a broken record to some of you, but the process with which we implement these bills is just as important as writing them. And in this particular situation, we could see a negative unintended consequence. This bill could prevent a growing sector from meeting its potential, and it can hinder healthy competition and cripple an industry before it has fully launched. As a result of these unique reporting and certification requirements compared to similar industries, we can become a clean energy and electric vehicle leader while also protecting consumers. Those mechanisms already exist, and the PSC, in my opinion, is not the appropriate body for this. For this reason, I'll be voting no. Thank you for your time. Any questions? The I lady no. has no questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well. The lady has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? Chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? Chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? Chair hears none. The report that the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machine. For what purpose does Representative Williams rise? Pursuant to Rule 133, may I be excused from this vote? The gentleman has the right, and the journal will so reflect. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of the bill. The yeas are 125 and the nays are 44. The bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Mr. Clerk, will you read the caption 
to HB, HB 88, HB 88. House Bill 88, by Representative Gaines, the 120th to be entitled an act to amend, entitled 17 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to criminal procedure, so as to enact the Coleman Baker Act and to provide a short title to provide for definitions to provide for review of cold case murder files by law enforcement. This bill I have referred to the Committee on Judiciary Non Civil. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. The gentleman from Athens, Georgia, Representative Gaines, recognized to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to uh, present House Bill 88 to the body this afternoon or morning. This legislation, named the Coleman Baker Act, would help us with solving uh, cold case homicides in Georgia. And I'll get into some of the specifics uh, of the legislation here momentarily, uh, but it is designed to help uh, solve some of these unsolved uh, homicides, supporting families who've had to deal with these cases, and also getting those who commit these crimes off the streets. It's named after Rhonda Sue Coleman and Tara Louise Baker. Rhonda Coleman was an 18-year-old who was murdered in, the, in 1990. And Tara Baker was a UGA law student murdered in 2001 in Athens, which uh, is, is, is my interest in this legislation, something that is, it's a case that has brought a lot of attention, especially over the last year or two. There's been a podcast that's been done related to this case and brought a lot of attention. Last year, the federal government, in a bipartisan fashion, passed legislation uh, on this matter to try to help uh, solve some of these cold cases, and this legislation would address some of our local and state agencies. The policy goals behind the bill ha are th there's three. One, it would give family members uh, of cold case homicides an opportunity uh, to have the case file reviewed six years after the death of the individual, of their family member. And if a new lead is found in the case, then it could be reinvestigated. The second policy objective in the legislation is it, it includes a reporting requirement. Right now, we really don't know how many cold cases there are in Georgia. The GBI has about 500 cold cases. We don't know how many across individual agencies in athens Clark County. There's 40 since 1972, but we don't have a statewide number on how many cold cases there are in Georgia. And then finally, this legislation clarifies that unsolved homicides and unsolved homicides and death certificates can be issued with a generic homicide cause of death to ensure that individuals and families can have uh, their, their uh, receive a death certificate for their loved one. Uh, this, was an, uh, this was a situation in the Baker case where it took uh, several years to get the death certificate issued. Her identity was stolen multiple times as a result. And so uh, this just clarifies that, that uh, coroners will be able to issue a generic homicide as a cause of death. Mr. Speaker, those are, uh, those are the policy goals behind the bill. I uh, believe this is a good measure that will help, again, solve some of these cases and make sure that we're getting those who commit these crimes off our streets. Be happy to answer questions if there are any. Gentleman has no questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well and ask for the body's favorable consideration. We do have another speaker on the bill that we will recognize. Representative Stacy Evans is recognized to speak to the bill. Representative Evans. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. I just want to rise briefly in support of House Bill 88. One of the families that has been pushing for this bill, the family of Tara Baker, is very dear to me and also I know to Representative Matt Reeves because Tara Baker was our law school classmate. And I still remember the day when we were having a mixer with either the vet school or the pharmacy school. I can't remember which one it was, but we thought it would be a good idea to get together that weekend. It was also Tara Baker's birthday and she never made it to the party and it changed our law school class I believe forever and thinking of all the time that has passed between then and now and knowing that the family is sitting out there still with no answers after all these years um, it breaks my heart and we're doing a good thing here appreciate all the work that's gone into the bill between the families and law enforcement and ask for your uh, yes vote on this it's a great bill thank you Mr. Speaker I yield the well. The lady has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? Chair, here's none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? Chair, here's none. The committee substitute is adopted. 
Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? Chair, here's none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bills, the yeas were 168, the nays won. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Mr. Clerk, if you'll read the caption to HB 155, 155. House Bill 155 by Representative Martin of the 49th and others to be titled an act to amend chapter one of title 43 of the official code of George Ann and Taylor relating to general provisions of professions and businesses so as to provide for the issuance of licenses by endorsement for certain licenses to spouses of firefighters, health care providers, and law enforcement officers. This bill has referred to the Committee on Regulated Industries. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chairman Martin is recognized to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, this bill um, is good for consumers in Georgia because it's going to put people to work. It will allow for license by endorsement for anyone that moves to the state of Georgia, currently holds a license of the same type that they're looking for here, is in good standing in the state from which they come, and um, also allows the state to test for specific knowledge that Georgia requires. This doesn't put these individuals ahead of anybody in Georgia. It's not an expedited license. This just lets them use the experience and the license they have to get a license um, easier in Georgia while meeting our standards so they can provide services for our citizens. Mr. Speaker, that's, just, that's what it does. Uh, and I ask the uh, House favorable consider consideration so that we can put more people to work. Gentlemen, yield for a question. I would. Representative Bentley has a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? I, would, I do. Um, Mr. Chairman, does this particular um, license include funeral director license it, as it well? It, uh, yes, ma'am. It includes all licenses in Georgia with the exception of firefighters, police officers, and health care pro professionals. So it does include licensed funeral directors and licensed embalmers? It, it, yeah, it, it, it includes all licensures except those, and, and if you'll okay. uh, reference lines 19 right. through 24, um, while those are great professions, I don't believe they're considered health care. <laughs> I'm just kidding with the good lady. Uh, <laughs> no, ma'am, it, 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 it would not exclude them. They would be included. Okay, but they are very, is it not true that I believe that those two professions are very important in this state of Georgia? A absolutely, and, and I believe the lady has, has brought forward in um, committees uh, earlier that there's a, a shortage and it's hard to get applicants in that field, so this would help that. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the question. Mr. Gentlemen, yield for one more question to your left. Representative Campbell is recognized for yes. a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? I do. Uh, does this uh, apply to teachers? It, it, it applies for everyone that's, uh, that comes in with a licensure um, before a board. Um, the teachers, I believe, have specific requirements, uh, and they would have to have those tested uh, in the state of Georgia. If, if they have specific requirements for the state, that uh, is allowed for on line 61 through 63. So no. I'm sorry? So, so no, it does it, not apply it, to teachers? It, it would apply to anyone that has a professional license, but I believe teachers in Georgia have specific requirements, so they would take that test for that specific knowledge. Only that specific knowledge. They wouldn't have to retest for things that, that, was, that they were in good standing for their license from another state. Mr. Speaker, I yield the well and ask the House favorable consideration. The gentleman has yielded the well.
Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? Chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? Chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bill? Chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas were 168, the nays zero. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Members, let me tell you what our posture is right now. We're getting, it's about 10 minutes till 12. We're going to take another bill, have a couple of announcements, and then we're going to break for lunch, and then we can complete our, schedule, our rules calendar right after lunch. So if you'll uh, continue to give, give the speaker in the well your attention, we'll move on through this next bill. Chair, rec excuse me, the, ch the clerk will read the caption to House Bill 204, House Bill 204. House Bill 204 by Representative Yurt of the, of the 152nd to be titled an act to amend chapter 32 of title 36 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to municipal courts so as to create the Georgia Municipal Court Clerks Council. This bill I'm referred to the committee on judiciary. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. I know that Chairman Yurta knows a little bit about municipalities. So Chairman Yurta is recognized to present the bill, the gentleman from Sylvester, Georgia. Chairman Yurta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. I bring you House Bill 204. This would statutorily create the Georgia Municipal Courts Clerks Council. Currently, there are 389 municipal courts in the state of Georgia. Really, this is the largest class of courts in Georgia. Uh, they range from Atlanta having multiple court sessions a day to smaller cities that may only have uh, a court every other month. Uh, despite the diversity in these uh, municipalities, every municipal court must follow the same laws and rules to make sure the courts run res properly and respects the constitutional rights of everyone brought before the court. The Georgia Municipal Court Clerks Council will assist in standardizing the operation of municipal courts and further bring professionalism to the administration of the courts. It will also bring competence and skill to the profession of the municipal courts to assist standardizing and best practices. Uh, it will also help them uh, seek grants for the creation of a municipal court clerk certification program. Uh, this bill will also give them an entity that re represents the needs of the municipal courts in the state. Uh, it will develop mentorship programs and training programs. Uh, more training allows municipal courts to uh, serve the public better and that's very important uh, to our communities. Uh, I've had judges call me to support this, a judge from Atlanta, and I've had municipal court folks from smaller communities that uh, need additional training to support this bill. Uh, I just ask for your favorable con consideration this afternoon. Gentlemen, yield for a question. Yes, sir, I will. Representative Gullett is recognized for a question to your right. Thank you, does the gentleman yield? I sure do, to my hey, friend. Isn't it true that my, uh, one of the cities I represent, City of Hiram, is uh, the, the clerk there um, is super in favor of this, of this measure um, and it's something that, that not only will they be able to bring state, state grants into, hopefully, or federal grants into, it'll also help train other, other members uh, in the municipalities. They may be able to, to be better clerks for the cities at the end of the day. The gentleman knows what he speaks. Thank you for the measure. 
Gentlemen, you yield for one more question. Yes, sir, I will. Representative Moore from the 91st has a question to your left. Representative Angela Good Moore. Morning. Good Gentleman morning. Gentlemen, yield. Yes, ma'am, I do. Isn't it true that the uh, city of Atlanta would benefit from this bill if they just simply answered their phone? I cannot answer that question directly, but if, if the gentlelady feels that to be the case, uh, I'm sure she knows what she speaks of. I do. <laughs> Gentleman has no further questions. All right. I yield the well and ask for your favorable consideration. The gentleman has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members now voted? The clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas were 168, the nays two. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Now, before we break for lunch, we're going, we're going to have a few announcements you may want to pay attention to. Chair Lady Camp is recognized for an announcement. Chair Lady Camp. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, today at 1 o'clock, we're going to be having our meeting for intergovernmental coordination. Um, I believe the room number is 406. Thank you so much. Representative Alexander is recognized for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Women caucus meet in room change 216 immediately upon adjournment. Lunch will be served. Thank you. Room 216, Representative Jasmine Clark, recognized for an announcement. Members of GLBC and your very pretty African garb, please join us down at the well immediately, immediately, immediately upon adjournment for a quick picture before we go to Women's Caucus. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If you have a page and your page is standing up front with me, we're going to take a photo with those pages. The rest of you are excused. We'll stand in recess until 1 p.m., Sharp, 1 p.m. sharp. We have a lot of other business to tend to today. 1 p.m. sharp, we'll get started again. We're standing in recess. <laughs>